Hi guys and welcome back to Faster Move. For today's episode we've got a great game for you here. Uh, the Braga versus Benfica in the um, <laughs> the competitions, one of the Portuguese competitions. So this is actually the start of a new series. It's the uh, where is it? The Super Super Taka, I guess. If I'm saying that right. Someone correct me. I'm probably saying it wrong. Super Tasa. Either way, uh, yeah, we've got that game for you and. Um, yeah, it's the start of a new series. So basically what we'll be doing is we're, we're going to be in Portugal. Uh, we are actually with Braga and not with Benfica. And um, it's just interesting. I want to give you a little bit of an intro to the Portuguese league and, you know, the team, why we chose it, what's going to be going on, what our aims are and all of that. And then we can get into that game. So it's a, a you know, an opportunity for us to win a competition straight away, uh, win a trophy. It'll be a great start. Uh, the board don't consider it as important. So if we lose, it's not a big deal. But it's obviously a better way to start. So, as you can see, uh, we are qualified. Where is it? For the Euros. So uh, we are playing in uh, the Europa League, uh, not the Euros. That would be, uh, you know, national teams. But anyways, um, yeah. So Braga are an interesting club. So first of all, I'm pretty sure a lot of you know Braga. Uh, you know, you must have heard the name at least. You might not know the team so much. Uh, but yeah, basically in, 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 in Portugal, there's what they call the three big, the big three teams in Portugal. So they always mention them. I'm sure you heard of them all. Sporting, Benfica and FC Porto. So these teams are incredible. They've always battled back and forth for it. Not so much Sporting, I suppose. I think it's been between uh, Porto and uh, Benfica a little bit more. I think Benfica are the ones who are holding the most titles, 35 Portuguese Premier League titles, they obviously as well have won the European Champions League as well. Um, but yeah, it's just it's just pretty interesting because these three have always challenged with each other. It's been, you know, Portugal pretty much uh, in this league, they, ju they just always battle it out, you know, it's always between them three, it's not really between anyone else. It's just 18 teams, uh, it used to be a little bit less before, but you know, the, they're always up. Uh, get more people involved, more teams involved. So Braga are just one of those teams who have always just about been there and about in their history. As you can see, they've been kind of up and down. Um, they qualified back-to-back -back Europa League performances. I think they even got to the final at one point. But as you can see, not a single Portuguese league win. The El you know, the Portuguese league, Portuguese Premier League. They've, uh, they've won the second league division three times and you know they have some decent cups here but nothing major they haven't won the Europa League they haven't won the Premier League they haven't won the Champions League or anything like that so they're fresh for history uh, it's also interesting I think that they made it to the final of the Europa League at one point if I'm not mistaken um, but yeah you've never actually won anything but they this finances are kind of okay it's secure at least if not rich or anything but you know if we push forward in the Europa League uh, and meet expectations which are where we reach the second knockout round. Maybe if we move further than that, we can actually start performing, you know, get some decent money and possibly, you know, the aim is obviously to qualify for the Champions League. That's always the aim. Uh, but first of all, we've obviously got the, we'll have to try and qualify for the Europa League at least, you know, that's the minimum. But um, so what's interesting about Euro uh, Braga as well is that they have a kit, if you haven't noticed already, that's very similar to Arsenal. So they have a, quite a bit of history, Braga. Uh, decent history, but n nothing, you know, they haven't really excelled, I suppose. Um, but what happened was is that they actually had green kits, if I'm not mistaken. I actually can't I have some poor memory, so help me out here, guys. But I think they did have green kits, and uh, one of their managers actually, um, it was a rumor that was either the manager or the board who decided that they, they loved Arsenal so much that they wanted to play in the same colours as them so they changed their kits to red and white to represent Arsenal. I think their fans are called Arsenalitas or something as well. Um, so yeah, it's very interesting. So bearing that in mind, this is why we selected the tactics. So we'll go through it in just a second, but let's, let's go through the squad quite quickly. Uh, so we've got Matheus, Carlos Marafona, we have a bunch of Portuguese talent basically and uh, some Brazilian, you know, South American talent and those always and uh, we have the random Egyptian talent Hassan as well, the target man. Uh, but yeah, some decent players in the squad, uh, obviously we could do with a lot of improvement but we don't necessarily have the money for it, we've got 1.6 million basically and uh, you know nothing to really spend normally i try and make make up the numbers first so we did that initially we got rid of some loanies that we didn't necessarily need 
uh, we sorted out the team but obviously the more money we have the more we can invest and make better decisions for our players so just for now we're going to stick with our players see how they perform in the first season and then later on we can actually start to try and invest in uh, different players and you know loanies and whatnot a lot of big clubs don't mind loaning to portuguese league because obviously it is a big league don't know if i can show you where it was um hmm. There you go, yeah, we're fifth in the in, in Europe at least, so it's it's not bad at all. We're ahead of France, so you know and even Holland who are you know have a higher reputation reputation. So we should give Port the Portuguese league the respect it deserves. Uh, so what I heard is that a lot of these teams actually don't get a lot of uh, fans, I suppose, not a lot of turnout, you won't make a lot of money from match day tickets. Uh, mainly fans go for uh, Porto, Benfica or Sporting. So if you're anyone else you don't really make much money in that sense. So that's exactly why we have to perform even better. Um, and uh, yeah, so th th this is a squad, you'll get to learn them more as we go on. I don't really want to go through name by name, you'll know them the more we play basically. And the in terms of friendlies, we had six. I did a little three game tour as well as a three game home uh, games just to give the fans a little bit and obviously for us to make some money too at the same time. So we only lost the first game, all the other games we performed quite well and uh, I would expect us to continue that form in the league. Uh, so competition expectations, I'm sure you realise already, but we qualified for the Euros, uh, reached second knockout for the Europa League uh, in the Taka de Portugal, one of the cup competitions of course they expect us to reach a sixth round as well and the, the game that we're going to play today is not important to the, the board. So in Portugal you've got their under 19s and you've got Braga B who are in the Portuguese second league. Now I heard, I'm not entirely sure, but I heard that they actually won last year's edition or maybe is it this year, I think it's this year. Uh, but they can't, can't qualify for the first division because obviously Braga themselves are there so they you know, kind of lose out on that spot but basically they always have to remain in the second league unless they re get relegated but either way Braga B are in the second league so it's good for our uh, young talent to actually develop we've moved one of our players to the Braga itself because they were good enough for the league and we needed the numbers in terms of potential there's a couple of nice little players here that we can actually develop for our team Gamboa is one of the highest rated ones by our staff anyways. In terms of under 19s though, let me show everyone, I've kind of got it highlighted here. Uh, a lot of nice talent here. So the, the reason why we're going in Portugal is actually because, um, well, P Portugal is very, a very interesting country. So I'm not sure if any of you, uh, any of you guys have realized, but for me anyways, my experience is whenever I play on the international stage, Portugal are always up there. They won the Euros in, the real, in real life, but all, you know, when I played, if you've watched my England save, they won the World Cup as well. They perform really well in the Euros, and I've played countless other international, you know, teams, and it's always Portugal who are the ones who perform really well. So it's interesting. They got a lot of the young talent. Uh, they're really making the step up to becoming a super nation, if you want to call it that. And it'll be interesting to help them on their way as we improve Braga at the same time. So we want Braga to be one of the top clubs in Portugal. Uh, they kind of are there and thereabouts but we really want to break that barrier and push up into you know becoming serial premier league winners and hopefully comp competing in a uh, champions league as well uh in terms of tactics we're going to be trying and playing uh trying and playing trying to play an arsenal type of tactic which is kind of a barcelona tactic i suppose uh but yeah we're going to be going for possession base so we've got counter we've got control and overload if necessary um it's just basically the same tactic but just pushing some of the players onwards uh, so we've got a false nine in Stojilovic um, <laughs> and we've got uh, inside forwards as Santos and Eduardo as well. Fonte as an advanced playmaker, Vuk Vukicevic uh, as a ball winning midfielder, we've got an anchorman and Mora. Wing backs to support the inside forwards, it's perfect for it. We want to play a ball, win ball playing defender as well, to, you know, really get things going from defence. Uh, and uh, just a regular central defender to complement him. So this is the team that we're actually going to go for today. But in terms of instructions, we're going to keep a nice structured team shape. And just as I always like to keep it simple, we're going to play with a much lower tempo. It's actually lower, but because we're on control, there's no lower option. So it just goes automatically to much lower. Uh, shorter passing, be more expressive and run from position. So with the roles that we have, as well as the instructions, we should be, uh, and the formation of course, we should be uh, maintaining a decent amount of possession. So Fonte is actually an advanced playmaker or possibly even a striker, but we've got players in the striker department and we don't need an advanced playmaker who's playing an attacking midfield. We actually need them to drop 
as an advanced playmaker into midfield and actually should help him as he ages. He's still 26 of course, but when he does age, uh, it will be great, you know, he'll already be suited to that position. Uh, and so that's the tactics we're going for, just a standard 4-3-3. Hopefully that eventually as we build our team more and more we'll get players who are more and more suited to that role. Uh, in terms of staff, we really pushed up the levels, we improved our scouting staff now, we're the best in the league, so that's great to see, I actually didn't notice that before. Uh, in the coaching staff though, uh, it's not the greatest, but you know we're limited in terms of numbers, we, but we did improve in that regard as well as the physios, uh, we've basically just stuck to everything that's advised and signed, filled it up basically. Uh, in terms of the scouting, there's no restrictions, which is perfect. I've got the scouts set up everywhere. That really matters, I suppose. I guess that's kind of insulting, but at the same time, uh, you know, I have to try and stick to the, the countries that are closest to Portugal, who are obviously European. So we've scouted all of Europe, North America, South America. And I think we've even gone a little bit... No, we didn't go into Africa at all. So what we did is we also scouted the main competitions, the Euros, the Champions League, at the European Europa League and the Champions League, sorry, I keep calling it Euros because I've been playing the Euros so much with England in my last save. Um, but yeah, we're also scouting the Premier League as well. So just the main competitions uh, and the main continents that need to be scouted. Eventually, when we can get more scouts, we will scout the rest of the world as well. Because really, you never know where a regen will come from, you know, world-class regen anyways. Uh, transfers, they've got some transfers in, coming in already without me. They're all coming in in January. The job offer, I think, is actually for Braga B. I've left my director of football to deal with that entirely. Hiring staff, buying, selling players, all of that business. I don't want to deal with that at all. Um, but yeah, we've got Diego Sosa coming in as a striker. I'm not sure why they bought him. We don't need him. And also this defensive midfielder, we also don't need him either. But either way, we have to deal with that. And uh, they only spent 850k in total. One of them's a free transfer, one of them's not. But both are coming in January, so it'll be interesting to see how we deal with it. Uh, how we deal with them, we'll probably just sell them on if possible, loan them out, I'm not really sure what to do with them if I'm honest. Um, but yeah, I think that pretty much shows it, so in terms of, let's see what else we can cover, facilities, um, the stadiums have got 30k, we can probably improve on that later on though, not necessarily right now, we have to try and fill up the stadium first, it was built in 2003 of course. It's great that was owned by the club, uh, stadium conditions great, that's perfect. Um, let's see what else here. Corporate facilities, all the facilities in general could be improved, but we've got some decent facilities as is. Uh, some excellent junior coaching and youth established youth recruitment, but again, we can always improve on that too. So eventually when we have the money, we'll ask the board for a bunch of that, a bunch of those things. But yeah, we've got some interesting affiliates um for loanies that we you know players to be loaned out which is really great because some of these are actually in the same league as us so it's perfect for us uh in terms of history i think i showed you that already hmm. yeah europa league runner, runner up there you go in 2011 portuguese premier league runner up in 2010 that's the last time so that's as close as we got in third place in 2012 so you know, we really need to be more consistent and really perform a lot better, which is the aim. Uh, let's see, maybe some records. Nah, forget it. I don't think that really matters. Best 11. Okay, so there's a lot of room for us to make up for in terms of history. Uh, finances, just in case for anyone who's interested, we've got 4 million in the bank. Um, no debts and loans, which is perfect. We've got a couple of sponsors, which isn't bad at all. And the projection as well is that our transfer budget will remain at 1.5 million. I'm hoping to see that change, uh, but the balance does really not look good at all. So hopefully we can improve in that regard. Um, but yeah, I think we can just finally kick off now. So it's really interesting to be playing in Portugal. They're not the highest league in the world, according to some people, but they are definitely, it's definitely an interesting league and it's definitely a very interesting team to play with and hopefully we can create some history here with Braga. One of those teams who I, I guess you could, if you really want to compare, the, compare them to Premier League team, you would say maybe Everton, who are really trying to break into the top teams in, 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 in the English league, of course. And we're trying to do something similar along the lines of that. Of course, we don't have as much money now as they do right now. Um, but yeah, it's similar, similar circumstances, I suppose. But yeah, I think we can finally kick off now. And that's a little bit of an intro to give you a little bit of background, just to create a sort of story for you guys. So that way, when we can play this, you can, we can really get invested in, in the history of the club and the club and just really hope to win. So we can kick off now. Uh, Moro has actually been 
uh, our backup defensive midfielder, Anchorman actually, and uh, we're just playing him for today's game because one of our players are injured, the, the starting one, but mo the majority of the team is our best 11. Uh, and yeah, expectations of course on Benfica, which is great for us. We don't need to feel pressured at all. They're favourites for today's game. And uh, even though we'll be hoping to lift the trophy, it won't be the end of the world. It'll be interesting to see how we perform straight away against one of Portugal's top teams. And see if we can stand up to them. Benfica, who have won the league three years in a row, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so it'll be great to really start to break that cycle. And here's a great way to begin that. So, when, let's see what we can tell the boys. They don't ex I don't expect them to win it. I can't, you know, tell them off or anything like that. We're huge underdogs. That's probably the best thing to do. But I'm going to try and motivate them instead. They've got a lot of... Um, we have good morale, basically. So there's no need for me to try and just, you know, brush it under the rug type of thing. But let's, let's set some of these things up. So we don't want only commentary. We want key. We want the highlights to be... Decent, not too slow, not too fast. We'll show you the replays as well. And I think that's it. So let's kick off. There you go. Braga against Benfica in a competition final. Finally, we get to see how we perform. So if we get any highlights, that is. But um, yeah, 25 minutes, nothing to show for it. Am I sure that I didn't take, stay off? Yeah, I did take off commentary. But we are dominating stats, that's great. And we are getting our first highlight here. Santos has got the ball for us. Roy Fento, our advanced playmaker. Wilson, long range shot. Can he score? Ooh, that's a decent save from the goalkeeper. Bottom corner, almost got a goal. And uh, that would have been a great way to start in the first half. Now, we are playing on the counter. I know some of you might be wondering why we're doing that in the beginning. We are, of course, not the favourites of today's game. So I always start on counter and then build up to control and overload if necessary. And as you guys know, I kind of do that halfway through the game or, or so. But because we're not favourites, I'm going to stay on counter for as long as need be. And then uh, if we really need to push up into overload in the last five minutes or so to try and win the game, we can do that. Boys are playing a bit risky, but the goalkeeper doesn't, you know, he just deals with it. And Santos can finally find our striker, Strokovic, and uh, maybe we can finally take down Braga. We do, we are kind of dominating midfield, but they are proving a little bit dangerous on the count, I suppose. But we are, we've got a ton of possession, and the stats are in our favour. And now, really, it's about turning the screw in. Come on, false nine, can you find them, anyone? Oh, long range shot that hits the crossbar instead. Not bad though. I'd say we had a decent start. I definitely had the better half, and I cannot tell my players off at half time whatsoever. So we'll actually encourage them and tell them, keep it up. I don't want to say I'm pleased with things because I don't want them to get too relaxed. So I'll just tell them to, you know, give them a bit of hope. We can come away with a result here. We can win. We are dominating Benfica. Is it Benfica or Benfica? Either way, we're dominating them. And hopefully, that will continue in this half, but we can actually get the goals necessary to show that dominance. Just a single shot for, for our opposition, because I don't want to say the word, don't want to say their name. And uh, they've actually gone a little bit more attacking, I suppose. 4-2-4, that's interesting. It's always a struggle playing a 4-2-4 in our formation, so maybe... Alright, so there you go. So I think 60th minute is about the right time to start making some substitutions. Wilson's a little bit injured, so we'll take him off. Please tell me. Ah, oh, he's left footed. Oh, he's left footed as well. I can't play an inside forward who's left footed on the left wing. That would mean he, was, he won't really cut in well. But if Wilson's injured, so there's nothing I can do about that. Or is there? There is actually. Nicola, tell me you're right footed. Yes, Nicola. There you go. Just move our striker back. He's had a bit of a quiet game, anyways. And it's the perfect opportunity to bring on Hassan. Fonte's tired. So bring on Thomas Martinez Deloni, who's also an advanced playmaker. But again, same thing, same issue. He's not really comfortable in midfield, but he'll get there. It's the same role, so he'll adjust just fine. So we'll save those. We'll make those two substitutions, and save the third one for later. Hopefully, we won't need the third one to come on and rescue the game. Hopefully, these two will already rescue it for us. 60th minute, though, is really coming towards the time where we need to push on and get a result, or push on and score, really. We deal with that initially well, and Martinez has a chance to start this counter, I suppose. But it's already six people back there. We can't counter with this type of formation. I think I'm going to have to push up soon. Santos coming in. 
Long range shot, can he score? No, he can't. That was horrible. Way over the bar. But yeah, and now Stokovic is having a horrible game. I think. You know what, I'll just take him off. There's nothing else to do now, at this point. Get it, really get in there, boys. I don't want to go... I'm not sure if this is extra time or straight to penalties the way Community Shield is in England. Um, but really, either way, I just want to avoid it. I want us to sneak by with one goal. Push up into control for this, you know, just for five minutes. And then push up into overload in the next five. Okay, nothing happened, even though I was hoping... You know what, I'm just going to stay... Oh, no, is this for us? Please score from this set piece. Yes, Moro. And there you go, that's all we needed. So I think we'll go back into counter. We were doing well in that sense. And we just utterly dominated this game. We really should have been scoring an open play goal. But either way, 1-0. And there we go, we got our first, hopefully our first trophy of the season. We're going to get a nice little replay of it here. Not a bad ball into the box at all. God knows, I mean, look at this. This was about five players here in the box doing nothing. And my player's just gone all out as well. I had everyone back there. And for somehow, Mora was the one who rose highest. He was the defensive midfielder who I said was the backup. And maybe he's trying to make us reconsider. But either way, it looks like the referee will blow his whistle and the game will end 1-0. Not the most exciting of games, but a great start to our career here at Braga and a trophy to relish either way. A trophy's a trophy in the end of the day, isn't it? So congrats to the lads. Well done on a good performance. And uh, I, have a, I, found, I don't know how I've never seen this before, but there's a lovely feature that I would recommend for you guys. Uh, and it's, you know, you obviously got choices to pick on when you want the game to save every week, every fortnight, every month, six months. I don't know why that's an option. And even a yearly save. Uh, I think, but um, I found the best one is actually to save right after every game. So I don't do that manually, of course. It's actually an option if any preferences. I would highly recommend it because if you save every week, I've actually had the problem where I've played the game, I've won the Premier League, and then it didn't save because it didn't hit the week yet, and my game just shut down. So if it saves up right after the game, you're guaranteed to have that that save basically, and anything else that you do during the week. You, you don't mind losing that as long as it's been as long as the game itself has been saved as long as the result has been saved because that's what matters most isn't it but anyways uh complete domination and as you can see here it's been porto in the last couple of years Benfica and sporting again the big, big three and we've already broken that cycle i suppose if you want to call it uh so hopefully we can do the same with the premier league so i'm already a legend which is a great start and uh hopefully we you know, long may that continue. So, in terms of when we'll be back, uh, I don't think we'll show you the first game straight away from the get-go. Let's actually have a look at the club's rivals and see if there's anything interesting coming up. So there's, oh yeah, I forgot, these lot are huge rivals to them. Porto, of course, rivals, and we're probably likely to show you that game anyways. We really want to try and show you, as I used to do, about every five games time, uh, just to try and see if there's anything interesting that's going on. And it depends on cup competitions. Once once we reach the expectations that you know uh, uh, that they expect of us, the board. So until I reach the Euro Cup second round, I probably won't be showing you the, the games before it. Uh, when we reach there, then it can really start to heat up and show you those games. It makes a lot more sense that way. So if it is in five, five games time, then I'll be showing you uh, or either the rivalry games as well. Goimaras, I'm really destroying these names. My, where are they? They're not even here for a while. There you go, they're here. Did I miss them entirely? Oh, they're here as well. So that'd be interesting. And what was the other team? Vincente. It's a local rivalry, so that'd be interesting to play too. But I don't think they're in the same league as us. Let's check. Yeah, they're in the second league, so that's okay. So just Porto and Goimeres as well to look out for. Both are historic rivals. One of them, of course, a very fierce one. And the uh, game against Goimeres is a, is a derby as well, so it's perfect. Minhoto derby. Um, 
and the media predictions fourth in case you guys didn't realize. So that's it, no real legends, we'll hopefully turn that around, we've just got one favoured personnel in Eduardo who's not even with us anymore, he's actually in the Chelsea under 23s for some strange reason, probably not really playing. Uh, but yeah, I think that will end our episode, so uh, we'll also obviously be showing you the games against Sporting, Benfica and Porto, that's the whole point, we're trying to, um, you know, really build a type of rivalry with all three of them, not just one. We want to break that cycle. So I think I'll be back for that game. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. That means I'd normally be here for the Europa group stage, but I'll actually show you the FCP one instead. That makes a lot more sense. So if you did enjoy this episode, then please do hit the like button and subscribe for more Daily Football Manager 2017 content. And as always, guys, thank you all for watching and stick around for the next episode.